This program is brought to you by the Virginia Farm Bureau. Large or small, Virginia farmers work year-round to help put food on your table. And Farm Bureau works year-round to help farmers and all Virginians. Farming, it's all good. To learn more, go to vafarmbureau.org. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Virginia Farming. I'm Amy Rocher. Today's program is all about mushrooms. We're visiting Sharondale Farms in Sismont, Virginia and learning more about how they grow these beauties. Mark Jones, and he's the owner of Sharondale Mushroom Farm. Mark, thank you so much for having us out here today. Oh, thanks for coming. I want to talk a little bit about the mushrooms. What made you decide, you know what, I'm just going to start farming mushrooms? <laughs> well, I had been growing uh, perennial food crops in, in the city. I lived in Portland, Oregon for about 10 years and had a great little urban farm there. And I had an opportunity to move here. Um, and. Uh, and thought there's something missing from perennial gardens that uh, is really important and kingdom fungi is it. And so growing mushrooms and thinking about mushrooms in the environment was really interesting. I had uh, finished a master's degree in plant pathology, looking at a fungal wilt of Tabasco pepper in Louisiana before I moved to Oregon. And so fungi were always on my brain a little bit and, uh, and I wanted to go back to, uh, to to thinking about that and growing some mushrooms and it just kind of morphed from there and I decided that uh, it's pretty fun and uh, I found a way to plurk which is to play and work at the same play time. Play and work, yes. okay. <laughs> All right, I think my job's a little bit like that too. Yeah, yeah that's good. Everybody <laughs> should seek that anyway. So this room is where everything starts. This is called the, the clean room. That's right. And why do you call it the clean room? Uh, we like to keep it clean and, and sanitized, and we have this uh, air filter that uh, pushes clean air across the work surface of the table so that we can keep things sterile okay. while we work on them. Okay. So let's start with some, I'll call it Mushroom 101. Okay. What is a mushroom, and how do they grow? Mushrooms are the visible fruiting bodies of a fungus. They are. So picking a mushroom is very similar to picking an apple off of a tree. You're just taking the fruit and the, the vegetative part of the fungus continues to grow, whether it's in a log or in, uh, in bags like you'll see later. Um, but what we start with are the vegetative parts of a mushroom called the mycelium, the fine white uh, and different colored strands that grow through the environment and uh, that's how they explore and they get their food and they uh, they grow through the environment. Now I'd like to show you how we start with a mushroom and isolate it and clone it and then we can move it into uh, from from a petri plate on the grain and I'll talk right. about that process. Okay, let's yeah. see it. Super, all right. So this is, a, this is a cultivated shiitake mushroom here. So most mushrooms uh, that we recognize have gills and these gills on the bottom of the mushroom are where spores are formed. Uh, this is uh, this is not always the case. Sometimes mushrooms have pores or teeth or or other structures. But in a mushroom like this, we want to clone this mushroom so that we have the mycelium, the vegetative part of the mushroom, and we're going to take uh, we're going to take part of the mushroom that's not from the gills because the spores will give us a. A, a recombined mushroom. But what we want to do is take a straight clone of this mushroom and put it onto the petri plate. So that's basically all there is to that. Um, taking some of the tissue right here that's not of the gills, and this is what we call the sterile tissue, right at the top of the stem and in the middle of the cap. So that's all we need, just little tiny pieces of mushroom to, uh, to get it going. Okay. We uh, saw the chicken of the woods earlier, and that's a, that's a mushroom 
uh, that grows here wild in our woods, and here's a piece of it. Uh, it has pores rather than gills. I'm just going to take a little piece of this, and we're going to clone this mushroom too. I'm going to try to get up in here and closer to the stem. We'll uh, cool the scalpel. So I'm going to try to avoid taking uh, material or tissue from the pore layer right here on the bottom and go back toward the stem and take some of what's known as the sterile tissue on this. So the mushrooms are a fungus. And I remember always hearing that mushrooms grow in the dark. But that's not really true, is it? No, most of the mushrooms we grow are woodland mushrooms and they need light, especially blue light, to, to form mushrooms. We can grow them in the dark while the mycelium is growing, but they need light to form mushrooms, to fruit. Okay. Yeah. Well, we see the first step, and I think we're going to go outside and see the next step into your growing process. Sure, let's take a look. All righty. So, Mark, here we are at another area on your farm. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about the mushrooms themselves. For starters, the farm that we're on, how big is it? Oh, we have about seven acres here. And is all of that dedicated to mushrooms? All of it is dedicated to mushrooms. We only grow in a small space, but uh, in the woods and, and in the gardens, we always are looking for mushrooms, wild mushrooms, what's growing, what's rotting. So we keep an eye on that. This sounds so funny to say what's rotting, but really that's what that's what the mushrooms thrive in. That's what we try to do when we, uh, when we put uh, spawn into a log or we, we try to, uh, we grow mushrooms on straw, we're, we're rotting that substrate so that uh, the mushroom is breaking down that material and making it available to itself to, to, to build biomass and to uh, get strong enough to grow mushrooms to, to fruit. Well, growing mushrooms is about as organic as you can get because they really do, they take the bad stuff and grow from it. Well, they so. recycle all of our plant and animal material. If we didn't have that, we'd run out of carbon. Imagine that. But, uh, but we recycle the carbon. The, the fungi can break down those big molecules in wood like lignin and cellulose that other organisms have a hard time breaking down and make them available for the next set of bacteria or other fungi or, or whatever it is that comes along. Okay. Yeah. They're the big molecular recyclers of the planet. So mushrooms, to me, have really gotten popular as far as people wanting to eat them. Why do you think that is? Well, they're delicious and nutritious, and I think people also realize that they're healthy for you. Uh, they have lots of protein and vitamins and antioxidants. It's a great way to get B vitamins and even D vitamin, vitamin D, which is usually from an animal source, but mushrooms also make vitamin D. And am I correct that mushrooms can and have been used in some medicinal purposes? Oh, sure, yeah. For Since ancient times, mushrooms have been used for medicinal purposes, not only in traditional Chinese medicine, but even from uh, around the Mediterranean uh, in, in, uh, in ancient times. Discorioides uh, talked about the agaricon being good for lung ailments and tuberculosis. Okay. Now, I know you grow a lot but what are your main varieties that you grow here at Sharondale? Sure. Uh, so we grow lots of shiitake and several species of oyster mushrooms throughout the year. Uh, we grow lion's mane mushrooms regularly and uh, piapino mushrooms. Occasionally we grow maitake and other mushrooms uh, seasonally. We grow a lot of experimental things outside to see what works. Uh, native strains that uh, we catch from the woods and uh, and other commercial strains to see how they how they work here and whether we can introduce them to hobbyists and farmers that want to want to bring uh, mushrooms onto their property. Okay, so now you're going to show us the next step. Sure. From the petri dish, we went to the sterilized grain, and from the sterilized grain, we went to the sterilized sawdust. And what we have after that grows out is called mushroom spawn. And uh, this is a, a bag of shiitake spawn. That's the mycelium of shiitake mushroom growing out on sawdust. And we're going we're gonna to transfer this to, uh, to, to a log, and I'll demonstrate that. And we also have a different type of spawn that's a little bit easier to deal with. This is called plug spawn. We make it out of these, uh, these small pieces of dowel rod. And uh, we hydrate these and grow the mycelium out on them. And, uh, and package them. We sell these so for hobbyists who want to uh, grow a few logs or, uh, 
or maybe uh, experiment with a new species. And we grow uh, lots of uh, shiitake and oysters, but also some really weird and esoteric strains and plug spawns so people can experiment with just a few logs. Okay. So uh, well, I'm going to step back and let you do your thing and walk us through the process. I'm, I'll demonstrate uh, the plugs first. And uh, basically, we start with a drill. And we're going to drill a little bit deeper than the plugs are long. and. Uh, I like to start a couple of inches from the edge of a, of a log, a freshly cut log, um, because the ends are going to dry out. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we'll go every six to eight inches along the length of the log. And then we'll drill all the way around, but we'll stagger the second row of holes so that we're, we're drilling holes in a diamond pattern. Because the mycelium grows faster along the length of the, along the, length of the grain than across the grain, so we have a diamond type growth pattern. Okay. So I'll just demonstrate quickly how easy this is. And then this row will be in between those. You see, I've already drilled this up next row. So we have, uh, we have holes where my fingers are, and we have, uh, so in a diamond pattern. And then it's simple enough to take the plugs, and, and what happens is from these plugs, the mycelium, the shiitake mycelium, will grow into the wood, and eventually, over 6 to 12 months, will become one organism, grow together in the log, and have enough, enough biomass to, uh, to fruit mushrooms. So after we get all the plugs into the log, we'll take a little bit of this modified wax and, and just gouge it on here with our fingers. This keeps the spawn from drying out before it has a the, the mycelium has a chance to grow into the wood. Okay. Uh, it's just a temporary, a temporary seal to keep the spawn from drying out. So we'll use this sawdust spawn. This is the shiitake mycelium growing through sawdust. We'll break this up a little bit. Okay. Now you, you keep using the word, the term inoculate. Yes. Can you explain what that means? Sure, inoculate means to take the mycelium of the mushroom and put it into uh, the final substrate or growing medium. So whether it's a prepared log or pasteurized straw or something like mm -hmm. that, we are moving the mycelium. When you talk about inocula inoculation, it just means moving the mycelium to new food. Okay. Yeah. So your hope is that the mycelium will crawl its way almost like a rooting system through that log. Yes. And then the mushrooms, when they fruit, will break out of that log in different places. Yes. To, to be picked. That's correct. To, okay. Yep. That is how it works. So I'm going to put a little spawn in this cup and cover it up. Uh, for this, I use a, an angle grinder that uh, spins at about 11,000 RPMs rather than about 2,400, so you get about four times the speed. Uh, this is a special bit made for the mushroom industry, and we have an adapter that uh, goes on here to hold the bit. And this will, um, I'll just demonstrate first. So you see, that's a lot faster than a drill. Right. And sometimes it's worth having a, a clamp handy. You can hold uh, crooked logs or logs that have uh, weird features in place while you drill. <laughs> Okay, so you kind of get the idea. It's important to be safe with these tools. Um, if I weren't wearing glasses, I'd wear safety glasses. So, uh, so once you get all the way around the log, we're going, to, uh, we're going to use this tool. And you can, of course, use your fingers to jam it in the hole. But this tool makes it very quick and simple to get the right amount of spawn in the hole each time. And it'll, it pushes the sawdust down in the hole so that there is still enough room to hold wax. And uh, we're going to transfer some of this melted wax to cover up the spawn. Again, the reason we do this is to, is to keep uh, the spawn from drying out before the mycelium has a chance to colonize the wood. 
So plug spawn with modified wax is by far the easiest way to grow mushrooms on logs. If you were to want to want to just grow a few uh, shiitake logs or oyster logs at home, you could do it. You could do it very easily with this, with a drill and a hammer. And then uh, and then we usually lay the logs out so that uh, that the the mushroom can colonize the log. The mycelium colonizes the log, and then after a certain amount of time, uh, mushrooms will form. And with shiitake, there's a little bit of management and getting the, the mushrooms to flush all at one time. But things like uh, oyster mushrooms and reishi and lion's mane, we can just lay the logs on the ground, push a little mulch up against them, and expect to see mushrooms when the, can, when the weather is right. Now, when you put them out, do they like shade? Do they like sun, or does it matter? Sure. Uh, you want to pick a place where things rot. We're trying to okay. rot this log a with moist... shiitake. Yeah, moist, shady spot that doesn't okay. dry out from the wind. And uh, we have a couple of spots in the garden. I set up a bed so that you all could see how we set up some of our mushroom log uh, trails and beds in the garden. And we try to inoculate as much biomass as we can. Every, every tree that falls either gets inoculated logs or we chip it up into wood chips and inoculate those. So almost anywhere we go on the property, we can uh, we can dig up a handful of wood chips and you'll see mycelium growing through oh, it. Oh, there it is. There mm -hmm. it is. So rot happens. Wow, rot does happen. Yes. And you're taking advantage of it. Well, we're trying to direct it a little bit, just right. a little bit, and right. get a little serendipity out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the educating you do because I know that growing mushrooms is not just a job for you, it's a passion and you really do like to educate people. You guys have workshops and things going on all the time, don't you? We do have workshops at the farm and I travel some to, to teach and teach how to cultivate. Um, it's fun to, uh, to see people get really excited about growing mushrooms and about uh, rotting their world and, and things in their world. Uh, I get a real kick out of that and I love helping people to get on that path of, of exploring mushrooms and, and how they can incorporate that into their gardening, into their food. And uh, we've had a very successful program with Virginia State University over the last few years, uh, teaching mushroom cultivation around the state. and. We've, uh, there was one study six months later that showed many people had, had added mushrooms to their diet and were actually growing mushrooms. So it's been really well reviewed and well received and we're gonna do it again this year. I wanna talk a little bit about harvesting the mushrooms. Um, you know, in, in farming terms, we have a <clears throat> planting season and a harvest season. Do you have that for mushrooms or is this a year round thing? Uh, we do. So the best time to inoculate are when uh, uh, logs are when trees become dormant. In just a few weeks, the leaves will change and fall off the tree. And what happens when trees go dormant is the sugars are set in the sapwood, and that makes it very easy for the mycelium to grow through the wood without having to break down the big molecules like cellulose and lignin. And so in the fall after the leaf drop and in the spring before the sap rises is an excellent time to inoculate logs. So we're coming, coming up on the season. When it's super cold, that's not a good time to do it because it slows down the growth of everything. But uh, many of the species that we grow are not tropical and they come from temperate forests and they will survive the winter. So you basically harvest mushrooms year round. Oh, we do. Most of our cultivation is indoors and we, can, we have a climate control building where we can harvest mushrooms year round. So you've got a bag full of a substrate, whether it's uh, sawdust or straw with mm -hmm. seed. Sure. And the mycelium is working its way in there and eventually you poke, you've poked holes in that bag and the mushrooms will grow out. But how specifically does a mushroom grow? It's, it's not like um, one carrot that you pull out of the ground. How, explain to us how they grow. Sure, yeah, so um, we grow in the bags. It's very similar to growing inside of a log. The mycelium has to <clears throat> become one organism and, and fill up the bag. And then it kind of senses that it's running out of food. It may starve, so it's a time to reproduce. And we release it then, and we, we allow it to get some more oxygen, um, and we reduce the temperatures sometimes and increase the moisture, and uh, it stimulates uh, the tissue to organize so that mushrooms will grow. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have one more stop to make, and that's where you package all, all the, your mushrooms up and get them ready to ship out. So are you going to show us that next? Sure, we'll show you that. All righty. Yeah. 
So, Mark, here we are in the, you call it the grow-out house. Yes. What happens here? Uh, so, in the rooms behind us here, we grow mushrooms and harvest them. And uh, over in this area behind you, uh, we weigh out the mushrooms and package them for sale. Okay. That brings me to my next question. Who buys your mushrooms? All these mushrooms are here. Where do they go? We sell uh, to a lot of chefs at, uh, in, in Charlottesville and the surrounding area. We sell to grocers and, uh, and also to a couple of distributors in, in the Charlottesville area. Okay. So about how many mushrooms or pounds of mushrooms do you harvest here a year? Uh, on a year, I'd have to do the math, but uh, weekly we, we harvest uh, several hundred pounds of mushrooms, uh, and that goes up and down a little bit depending on the season. Wow. We are just moving into our main mushroom season. Uh, people are finishing up with their tomato and watermelon uh, eating, and they're getting back into the, the fall warm foods, the braised foods, and mushrooms are a big part of that. Well, I was going to pick up one of these to show our viewers. This is one of your packaged an oyster mushroom mix, and there's yellow oyster mushrooms, and then and a gray oyster a gray mushroom. oyster mushroom. Yeah. So this is what goes out to the grocery stores and to the chefs, I guess, when they yeah. order them. These are packaged for grocery, and this is our our mushroom medley. It has shiitake, oyster mushroom, and lion's mane mushroom in it, and uh, and then here you see some bulk mushrooms. Here's a box of lion's mane ready to go out, a box of yellow oyster mushrooms, and some shiitake mushrooms. Okay. Now, how many people do you have working here on the farm? Because this is your full-time job. This is not a hobby for you by any uh, means. No longer a hobby. Uh, you know, I do this full-time, more than full-time. In fact, I just saw a T-shirt that said entrepreneurs are the only people that work 80 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours a week, which is, <laughs> which is pretty true. That's about right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, but I uh, have a couple of, uh, couple of fellows helping me out, and we have another person coming on at the end of the month. Great. To help out with our busy season. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about some of the varieties. Um, I'm going to pick this one up. Sure. This is one of the lion's manes. Yeah. And it is the neatest. It just, it feels furry. And I think that I read that these, some people think they taste or feel a lot like lobster when you eat them. Uh, sure. Yeah. The texture is a lot like seafood. And uh, the, way, the way I like to prepare them is... We tear them apart from the face like this, and you can make whatever size you want. And you see how, how fibrous they look in there. And then right. you get to this, and wow. it almost looks like a piece of, of crab meat or crab lobster meat, or, meat when, mm -hmm. you, uh, when you cook it down. Wow. So we just saute it or roast it. So do you have a favorite when it comes to eating mushrooms? I mean, you grow all of these, so I know you eat them on a regular basis. I do. Uh, I, I really like the almond portobello, which is a, a tropical mushroom that we grow outside. Uh, the season is just about over for that. It, it tastes like a, it has a texture of a portobello, but it has an almond extract flavor and, and essence about it that's really delicious. And then, of course, I like, uh, I like this mushroom, which is the, uh, the piapino, and this is excellent in butter with salt and pepper. And that's such a pretty, such a pretty fruit right there. I mean, that looks like you know that looks like what artists draw their artist renderings of a typical mushroom. Yes, it's a it's a typical looking mushroom, and uh, the chefs really like it. It's got a good nutty flavor. So, do you get feedback from these chefs that that purchase your mushrooms? What do you hear from them? I always ask them for feedback and ask them if uh, if our product quality and, uh, and our services is, is good and uh, how, we, how we can help them to meet their needs for their restaurants and uh, what they would like to see in the future. So I always look for feedback from the customers. It's the only way we can keep bringing the highest quality to the market. So these, these mushrooms are packaged in the little shells and they're labeled and ready to go. But what happens from here? Do you personally deliver these? Do, do the groceries come pick them up? How do you get them? Uh, we make deliveries. We usually deliver. Um, and that way, uh, and I like to make deliveries uh, uh, fairly often so that I can get that feedback that we were talking about. Uh, I do like to, to build personal relationships with the buyers and understand what their needs are and what their business is like. And that way I can understand what I need to do to, to help them. Uh, get mushrooms in the mouths of their customers. So, Mark, if people want more information about your mushrooms and about Sharondale Farm, what should they do? Sure. Uh, we have a website, SharondaleFarm.com. We also have a Facebook page under Sharondale Farm. 
uh, or please email or call. We'll, uh, we'll set you on the road to rot or put mushrooms in your belly, whatever you like. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you so much for having us out today. It's really been a wonderful learning experience. Oh, thank you, Amy. That does it for our show. Thanks so much for watching and have a great week. From apples to zucchini, Virginia farmers work hard to put food on your table. And Farm Bureau works year-round to help farmers and all Virginians. Farming, it's all good. To learn more, go to vafarmbureau.org. Check out Virginia Farming on Facebook. Virginia Farming's Facebook page is a great way to stay connected with Virginia agriculture. You might even find some humor there too. You'll find links to events and happenings all over the Commonwealth that are of interest to farmers and consumers alike. So connect with us and share your stories and photos with the Virginia farming community and keep up to date on all things agriculture. Virginia Farming on Facebook.